you know it's Wednesday Wisdom Wednesday with them PJ Greetings and welcome to Season 2, Episode 27 of Wisdom Wednesday with MPK. I'm Dawn, DawnyRobinBobbin.com if you want to find me on the internet. And today we come to the finale, the grand finale of Psalm 37, the musical. We're going to do verse 39 and 40. <laughs> but the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their help in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. And save them because they trust in him. And save them because they trust in him. Psalm 37, 39, and 40. There it is, the new song. I found that there was a theme in 39 and 40. And if you look at it, it's the word salvation in 39. But the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Five words that really mean pretty much the same thing. We've got salvation, we've got help, we've got deliver, we've got deliver, and we've got save. That is the nutshell of the entirety of the word of God. It boils down to Jesus, because guess what Jesus' name in the Hebrew is? It's Yeshua, which comes from our word in verse 40, and save them, Yasha. It is the noun of this verb yasha in 40. So if I'm just going to give you the nutshell here, Jesus kindergarten Sunday school class is the hope for everyone. So let's go back to 39. But the salvation of the righteous, that word for salvation here is teshua. And it happens 13 times in the Psalms, 34 in the whole Old Testament. And, and it means what? Save, deliver, hear their cry. They cry out and he saves them. That is the idea here of a tushuat in the Hebrew. The righteous. Okay, Jesus is going to save the righteous because their righteousness is his righteousness. But the salvation of the righteous, it's from the Lord. You can't even get saved by trying harder and being nicer. It's a gift of God. In Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So we are born again, and it isn't even because of us. It's a gift of God. We have to receive the gift. How are you saved? You're saved because you receive what Jesus gave. But the salvation of the righteous, it's from the Lord. And what happens is you put yourself in a dependent place. That is a believer. A believer is not independent. A believer is wholly dependent, completely dependent on Yeshua, the Savior. He is their strength in the time of trouble. Because there's no getting out of trouble this side of heaven. Trouble reigns on the just and the unjust. But for the believer, this is all the hell you'll ever have to face. For the unbeliever, this is just the beginning. Here is what we need to do as believers. He is their strength in the time of trouble. Let Jesus be your strength. You must surrender and allow him to be your strength. Paul got this. God blinded him on the road to Damascus and he went, you're the boss, I'm not the boss, and surrendered his life to him. And you read that in the book of Acts. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. See, it's not about you and it's not about me. It's about him. Our lives need to completely make Jesus front and center. Center stage Jesus, not us. Paul says, therefore, most gladly, I will boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Verse 10, 2 Corinthians 12. 
Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. But the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. Now we're on to verse 40. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. So we've got two different words here. We've got help, which is the Hebrew word azar. And that happens 82 times, 17 in the Psalms. And it means to surround. It can mean to protect, to aid. And the Lord shall help them. Jesus will help you and deliver you. Now, sometimes we think, well, he died of cancer. God didn't deliver him. Well, he died in prison being persecuted. God didn't deliver him. Well, you see, death is deliverance for the believer. Death is deliverance. You might never get out of your trouble here. However, you will be delivered. But sometimes you will be delivered here. God does do miraculous deliverances still. But his purposes are the point, not our purposes, not what I think should happen. We trust him, his way, his will. We pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Holy is your name. Your will be done. You see, your will be done. It's his will we're after, not our own. The Lord will help us and deliver us his way, his will for his glory. And we are his servants. And so what we do is we trust him and the Lord shall help them and deliver them. That word deliver is used twice in verse 40. Those two delivers are the same word. It's palat, cause to escape. That word happens uh, 25 times, 16 times in the Psalms. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them. God is our deliverer. He is our escape. It's in Christ. Do you know that you can be in a prison and be delivered? You can be persecuted and delivered all at the same time because this body is a temporary arrangement. We're going to have a forever arrangement with Christ. He shall deliver them from the wicked. We're here for a short, brief stint, maybe 85 years, 90 years, and you're going to deal with wicked. But what we need to do is deal with the wicked by his strength, by his truth, by his power, by his word, by his righteousness. And that is a learning curve. Sometimes God shoves you into a wicked furnace just to help you be trained, to be honed, to learn how to respond. Perhaps you're a kind of person who reacts. I can't believe they did that to me. Urgh! And you're an angry responder, perhaps. God will cook that nonsense out of you. When you say, Jesus, be the boss of me, he is not going to leave you the way he found you. He is going to change you. He's going to set you up that you will be changed, that you will be conformed to his image. We pray Romans 8, 28. We know that all things work together for good to those who are the called according to his purpose. People don't like that scripture when they're going through stuff. But the purpose is verse 29. To those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. He's got purposes in your pain. He's not going to waste it. To be conformed to his image. He wants us conformed to the image of his son. Look at Romans 8, 29. Always read Romans 8, 28 and 8, 29 together because it makes more sense. God has purpose in our pain. For whom he foreknew, and he did, he foreknew you before you were even a thought in your mommy and daddy's eyeballs. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. He has a plan for your life, and that plan is surrender and conform to the image of Jesus. He says, follow me. And he wants us to imitate him as he imitated Christ. And that's what Paul said too, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Can we say that? That's where we need to get. And so as you go through fire, know that the Lord will help you and deliver you. He will deliver you from the wicked and save them. Now that word is our word yasha in the Hebrew. Yasha is where we get our word Yeshua, which is Jesus. Yasha happens 206 times. 57 of those times is in the Psalms. Jesus saves. That was the point of him coming to save you from hell. You earned hell we're all sons of Adam and Eve. We're daughters and sons of darkness. We chose our own way. We went our own way. Jesus paid the way so we wouldn't have to have the punishment for our sin. That's your only hope. And that's what we find in Psalm 37, 39, and 40. God does not want you to pay the penalty for your sin and end up in hell forever. He made a way. His own right arm, Jesus, Yeshua, salvation. He came to save, to set you free from the threat of death and, and eternity in hell. But we must choose him. He shall deliver them from the wicked 
and save them because who gets saved? Because they trust in him. That's what we need to do. We need to trust in Jesus. How do you put your trust in Jesus? Are you depending on Christ? Did you just say some magical prayer in 1985? Jesus come to my heart, but you don't know him. You go to church maybe every Sunday, but you don't know him. You don't know the reality of being saved by Jesus. It's not religion. This is a relationship, entering into a relationship with the King of glory, with the King of kings, with Jesus. Jesus wants to be your salvation. He wants to save you. Will you let him? I wrote a poem. This is my book. It's called Jesus Be the Boss of Me. You need to let Jesus, first of all, convert you. If you've never been converted, it's a past tense salvation. But then he's going to put you through a process of change, sanctification. He is going to change you. He's not going to leave you with the way he found you. And it's painful because we get so used to things the way they are. And God says, no, you need to be conformed to my image and I will help you. Because I will give you tailor-made trials and troubles and stuff that you need to contend with, deal with, so you can get free of this sin stuff that clings to you. And then he is coming back. Glorification. He is going to save us. Saved, being saved, will be saved. That's how it works. There is a finish line in your future. And I want y'all to finish well, and I want to finish well. Today I wore my strong to the finish t-shirt. One of my life scriptures is another acrostic psalm, Psalm 119. I love these acrostic alphabet psalms. Psalm 119, 112 says, I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes forever to the very end. Finish line faith. I'm going to train for a marathon by running one block a day. I promise you it will never happen if I'm doing it that way. But the church trains like sissies with bold assumptions of their inness. They don't pray, read their Bibles, or relate to the king, but are religious and nice and spiritless. It's time for a rude awakening. Religion will never get you to heaven. Only a living relationship with Jesus the King and a large heaping dose of repentance. Turning from your wretched, despicable ways and saying from your life action, Yes, Lord, Jesus, be the boss of all my days. Show me how to wield your sword. The sword of the word is offensive to our flesh that wants this deplorable way to death. Oh, Lord, pour your spirit of life upon these dry bones. Make us shinier and holier day by day, training breathing living stones, preparing earnestly to be worthy of an eternal heavenly stay. We need finish line faith. Our future is a funeral and then a forever. Everybody gets to die. Death is a package deal with birth, unless you're Elijah or Enoch. It's just how it is here on earth. But we push the idea away from our faces and muddle on with our merry lives living as though we have a tomorrow and will not have to face any tragic surprise. For I have been crucified with Christ, therefore I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And the life I live, I live by faith, needs to be our creed as we race to eternity with finish line faith, exhorting, pleading, begging if need be, dragging whosoever will, open their blind eyes and see and be free. There it is. There's this Jesus, he cute. We need to trust him. We're done with Psalm 37, the musical, but hide that section of scripture. Psalm 37 is a really good thing to memorize. All the acrostic Psalms, turns out, are really good script to memorize. And trust him. He saves those who trust in him. Do you trust Jesus? If you don't, today is the day to begin. God bless you. You know it's Wednesday, Wisdom Wednesday.